Hey, what's up, everybody? This is the Comic Collectors Guild. I'm a bearded comic guy. This is going to be our weekly State of the Union video cast. Uh, going to be coming out every Sunday evening. Um, I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves, uh, starting with the president. Uh, I'm Izzy, president of the Guild. Hi, my name's LT, House of Geekery. I'm vice president of the Guild. Uh, my name is Jake. You guys know me as Superman. I do the YouTube and some of the social media content. And I'm Ruby Batcave, and I just join these guys for the fun of it. <laughs> there we go. That's perfect. There you go. So we're gonna. This video is gonna be a lot of where collecting started off for us. Uh, what brought us into this world? Comics, uh, TV shows, movies, uh, whatever. Um, so I'm going to open it up to the Prez to let us know how he started collecting, what brought him into this world, uh, what issue, run, movie, TV show, etc. Well, actually, my mother brought me in this world, so let me oh. start off. With her. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, as early as I can remember, uh, I, I remember wearing uh, Batman underoos. When I was a kid, I think LT will remember those days when they had it. Uh, There's actually a funny picture. It's actually on the page somewhere if you dig deep. The picture of me still wearing that outfit. Uh, I was watching uh, reruns of Batman 66 as a kid and just loving, you know, comics in general. Uh, was collecting comics since I was a kid. Uh, then drastically it got destroyed, but that's another story for another day. Uh, then years later, here I am. I restarted collecting, uh, mainly statues. That's that's what I like to collect the most. But when it comes down to it, I collect just about everything: uh, comic statues, uh, pops, and only have two figures. And LT gave me those, so I have two figures in my collection. But um, yeah, I mean, pretty much anything comic I like, you know. But Batman is the main one. And that's the uh, pretty much the main character I like to collect. We'll see. And that's it. Well, I started off young too. I started off on Batman '66. Uh, my dad was a big uh, TV show buff, and, and that's how he raised me off that Star Trek, the original series. You know, just uh, even even old school Saturday night, uh, Saturday morning cartoons like. Spider-Man and, and the Super Friends and stuff. Uh, I started basically collecting action figures like about 1988. And that's that comics came a little bit after. Uh, I would say maybe uh, although I did read when I was a kid the uh, 88 series of death in the family i didn't really start collecting till maybe a, a nightfall in 92 uh with the breaking of the bat um but since then i mean my main passion is collecting action figures i don't know if you can see behind me that's not even a quarter of what i have uh and uh to this day it's it's all about action figures but you know, with comics being a close second. And again, my main focus is, is Batman and DC. Nice. Uh, well, for me, uh, I grew up uh, mostly in the 90s, uh, especially with Batman animated series. That's really what brought me into the superhero world. Um, I also have a little bit of throwback through my dad. I watched, you know, Batman 66 and Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, uh, the animated Justice League show. So, very early on, I was, you know, into these characters. Um, grew up with, you know, the comics, uh, you know, the Frank Miller Dark Knight Return series. Uh, got into the Rebirth line when that launched, and, and that really kind of catapulted me uh, as an adult in the comics. And then uh, as far as collecting-wise, I started with Funko Pops and, and then very quickly got into the Sideshow and Prime 1 statues. Uh, I'm currently moving, so you can't see anyone behind me right now, but um, I collect predominantly DC. Um, my you know, first statue was the Superman premium format, 
And, you know, I love collecting, you know, the Batman rogues and the uh, the Justice League characters. I uh, got a whole bunch of Prime 1 and Sideshow pre-orders coming. So uh, it's a growing collection. It's a, an incredible hobby. Uh, but the characters that started for me, like everybody else, was was Batman and then, you know, Superman and uh, the, the Justice League from the animated show. Uh, Hawkman, Hawkgirl, Green Lantern, uh, Flash, Wonder Woman, those characters. But uh, that's what started for me. And... Uh, yeah, anything DC, I'm all about. Who's next? Me? Yep, go ahead. Uh, 89 Batman probably started it for me, but I'm going to go with Jake and say the animated series just because it's it was when I, when I was a kid. So, yeah, 89 Batman started me, but comics I got into after watching the animations. I got into the comic books, and that's basically it. It's always been Batman. Yeah, yeah and I'm, I'm going to piggyback on that as well. I mean, animated Batman, the animated X-Men series, and Ninja Turtles, you know, as a kid, you couldn't stay away from stuff like that. And then it trickled right into comics. You know, we were talking about it last night. You know, one of the first issues I picked up was that Secret Wars. I figured out what it was today. Um, and that was Hulk, which, I mean, you see behind me is a whole bookcase of Hulks and everything. But Batman is right there. You know, you guys can't see all my Batman stuff. But, but going through reading, you know, the, the Man Who Laughs and then Under the Red Hood and, you know, stuff like that. And then seeing it movie and yeah, I love Red Hood he's probably one of my favorites Nightwing is definitely my favorite and anything Nightwing that comes out I you know I love personally uh, but definitely those animated cartoons X-Men I, I love the X-Men it was always there Saturday morning you couldn't beat it yeah I'll touch on you know I said DC that X-Men uh, animated the 90s was Marvel wise by far my favorite like the voices and the the Wolverine character in particular, yeah. I was all about that show. Yeah, it was so good, so good. And I mean, but Batman is definitely by far always there. Yeah. All right. So I'm well, curious from the older guys, like, did you? How did you what, what feel going from what, going, going <laughs> from the other <laughs> stakes in? Uh, how did you guys feel when they did like the Batman '66? Uh, version of Batman and then switched over from like the animated was it like a breath of fresh air or was it more like oh man we kind of miss like the Adam West stuff uh, I, I'm gonna let me tell you something 66 is before me and LT so let's let's get started with that all right because that was before we were born okay buddy yeah. so <laughs> that's way before but um you got to remember when, when you know, when you're a kid and you're watching that, it, it was a, a cool show still. You know, it was really a cool show. That you know, Adam West was Batman. Um, and then when it started a transition, and you start seeing more of the animated series, and then all of a sudden you got Michael Keaton as Batman. And and I will not forget that. I was 15 years old. I was on a date. She was 21. Don't ask questions. Way to go, and man. I actually went on a date and, and I saw, you know, Michael Keaton as Batman. I'll never forget that. Um, so that really, that really pushed, you know, me loving Batman and going into collecting a lot more. You know, it was probably one of the best movies made at that time. It was very scary. You? It was, it was very scary too. Yeah. <laughs> It was dark. It was pretty dark. It was, it was dark. That's when he started to make a dark Batman. You know? Yep. Um, uh, go ahead, LT. Say, I mean, if you're talking about like transition to like, say, the Super Friends, it wasn't really bad, big a transition because they were the same color, same campiness of the original show. And of course, so anyone who saw that transition into that you know perfectly um you know it wasn't until like 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 is said uh 89 batman where it just all of a sudden was dark black suit everything you know that was a that was i mean that wasn't so much a transition tradition i mean transition i mean uh i think it was just more of a kids who saw it back then are now seeing him 
and grown up eyes. You know, so by 89, I was already a sophomore in college, the college, <laughs> high school, versus when I was, you know, kindergarten super friends. So, yeah. Uh, before we move forward, I just want to uh, make a call out, uh, you know, to uh, Geek Out Therapy, um, Mexican Reviews, Shadow Rabbit. Uh, I'm not going to mention any last names to Mark, Tom, and uh, Danny Rab, and Locksmith Comics, who are sponsoring our guild, who has became sponsors, and they've actually looked out for us a lot. I want to say thank you to them, you know, for uh, believing in us and, and sponsoring us and getting us where we're at today. It's awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So I want to touch a little base because last night uh, I was overhearing the podcast, right? And you guys were talking about collecting, right, Ian? Yeah. Okay, you guys were talking about collecting. And I actually was thinking about that last night. You know, in, in, when people start to collect, because people are going to obviously watch this. You know, and they're going to be like, hey, look, you know, I want to collect two or I want to get this. Um, but they don't know how to start. And I actually thought long and hard about that last night. You know, for someone who's going to be a new collector, to me, my personal opinion is don't start off on comic books. If you're if you're an adult, don't start off on comic books. Uh, and the reason why is there's so many different universes. There's so many different types. There's so many different keys. You, you don't know what you're looking for, you know? But if you do get, if so, to me, if someone's going to get a comic book, just buy the one you like. Plain and simple. It's you true know? because it becomes convoluted. Um, some of the stories don't go with other stories and they're not numbered sometimes. And it becomes very confusing over sto like storylines. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. So, I mean, the way I look at it, if someone who's going to start off collecting, it, you see a pop of a character you like, buy it. You see, uh, um, you know, especially if you're going to start off small, you know, because you can't all of a sudden jump into a $1,300 Prime 1 statue, you know what I mean? And that's that's not how you do it. Uh, you should, I believe they should, someone should start off small, buy a couple pops, DC collectibles, or even GameStop. They have a lot of the Diamond Selects, you know, 50 bucks, $39. You know, start off with what you like small, get what you like, and then you, you're going to upgrade to the big boys like Sideshow and Iron Studios and so forth, you know? But I think starting small of what you like is the best way to start collecting right about now. Yeah, I agree. No, I, and to piggyback off of it, you know, you got to stay true to yourself. You know, you can't let people you know, kind of shame you into, oh, that's not the exclusive, you know, it's not worth anything. If you like it, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's exactly. you know, the variant, if it's rare, you know, if it's signed, what every collector, not every collector is the same, you know, and then as as you're building a collection, you also got to figure out, you know, as you can see behind LT and by my, behind myself, you run out of room. So then you got to start thinking, what is priority in your collection? I have so much stuff not displayed. I mean, I'm sure LT's got the same exact stuff that, you know, you buy, you buy, you buy, but then you sit there, you know, I open up all my stuff. I pose everything, I display it, you know, and you just straight run out of room, you know, so you then got to start looking at, okay, what, what do I want? You know, you can't get everything that you want. I mean, you can, but it's going to be like, a, you have to have a, have, have a house of a museum, that no one can touch anything. Yeah. Yeah, and to piggyback off of you guys, I mean, for me, uh, going to the best advice I can give, you know, piggyback off of what Izzy says, definitely start small and work your way up to the bigger stuff. Don't just go for the grand scam scheme of things. So the thing I would recommend is pick your favorite character, like one character, and start there, and then slowly, gradually build up more and more. Um, and then when it comes down to making you know, a selection on a character you want, don't let somebody else's opinion of that statue or figure 
alter your, I mean, it's, it's your collection. So get the things you want. If everyone else, you know, hates on it, who cares? Like it's for you. So I think it's important to just, instead of worrying about everyone else and what they think is going to be cool, get what you love, get the characters that are important to you. Um, and then once you start getting into it, create a vision in your head of what you want and don't just go piece by piece by piece and just figure it out. Have a vision for what you want to collect. That way it helps you, you know, with not running out of room as, uh, as Bearder was talking about. And, and it really helps be able to make you not make impulse decisions because, you know, when we're collecting these, you know, expensive statues and figures, you know, you want to be able to, to make smart decisions and, and be within your means. So I think that's really important. And then just enjoy your collection. Don't let anybody sway you from from what you enjoy. That's good. What about you, Alpine? My figures, I mean, my figures, I have maybe one in every 10 or 15 or as an exclusive. If I just merely went by exclusives, then I wouldn't really have a collection. So I, you know, I I suggest, like, like y'all said, concentrate on one figure or one person one idea and go from there that's what i did with batman and now i'm you know waist deep in figures mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i mean um what about you ruby what do you think I don't collect anything anymore. I used to have lots of stuff, but the thing with me is I'm clumsy. So if I have a statue, I'm always afraid I'm going to break it if I'm dusting it. So I'm like, okay, so but where am I going to put this giant thing? You know, like I, I, I never, I never got into collecting statues. I have a few Funkos, but um, uh, I have more comic books than I do figures. But yeah, if you like something, just buy it. Even if it's Funko Pops, who cares, right? It's all for fun. Yeah, I know um, in my personal collection, God, I can't even inventory that thing. But, you know, in my personal collection, I've got a lot of things I just like. You know, I'm not a big pop collector, but I will buy a Batman pop. Without fail, I'll definitely get a Batman pop. Me too. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, I'll get a lot of the Diamond Selects, things like that, like a lot of different types of statues. Um, but about half of my statues or the half of my collection is uh, investment collecting. You know, I, I see, you know, a price which I know is, you know, valued a lot more and I'll purchase it. You know, and then it's worth, you know, four times than what I paid for it. Um, but I don't do that all the time because, uh, you know, you run a lot of risks doing it that way. Then yeah. you lose the fun of collecting. You know yeah. what I mean? But I like um, uh, like Heath Ledger, NECA, Batman, or the Heath Ledger, NECAs. You know, ever seen those? The Joker. Yeah. Yeah. The 18 awesome. inch. Awesome. You know, when that thing came out, it was about $99. You know, when it first came out. Now I believe the value of that thing is probably close to three, three twenty, you know, for resale. But you know, definitely everybody's gotta watch out when they're collecting is how they buy, especially on eBay, because people will gouge you out, give you scalper prices, you know, and you just gotta be careful when you start getting more into older stuff. You know, anything new is good. Old, it, they'll 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 grab you in a minute. You know, but when sure. it comes out too, it all depends how bad you want it. You know. Yeah, and also be aware. Yeah, and be aware with the bigger stuff too, like the sideshow and Prime One. When you do get it, they do have payment plans, so you know oh, you yeah. don't have to go on eBay and and pay all this money up front you can go on the sideshow's website and you can pay it over eight nine months before it even comes out and it makes it a lot more feasible than just paying all up front so if you do and when you decide to go for the big boys you know just know that that is an option and just make sure you do your homework on you know what's coming out because you can save a lot of money by doing that and they have a lot of rewards points like my last statue i paid barely a hundred bucks for a, you know, $700 statue because they give rewards points and coupons. So just keep an eye out because you can find your way to 
find bargains even for the more expensive. You just have to be patient and, and really do your homework before you just with Jake, make an impulse buy. With uh, reserving seven statues at a time. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But well, like um, someone mentioned yesterday's podcast, it you need to collect within your budget. Yeah, yeah I was about to bring that up. Those comics it, and more. Yeah, if you're if you go beyond your budget, then the, the, your collection's already dead in the water because you can't collect anymore. Mm-hmm. True. You know, any any little thing helps for your collection. You know, a, a five dollar figure. You know what I mean. A, a pop, anything that's that's you know reasonably priced, you know you you're building on your collection, you know. Yeah, that's the biggest thing is is your collection. It doesn't matter what anybody on Instagram or Facebook says. You know, if your grail is a McDonald's toy from 1990, who the heck cares? That's exactly. something that you want. That's something that you remember. Exactly. It's nostalgia. You know, it's all that type of things that just you know bring back that memory. You know, that was just a great day for your childhood. But it was a Batman McDonald's toy, you know, that they only made whatever amount and it's, you know, hard to find or whatever. But that's your grail. It doesn't matter that some scumbag on Facebook is, you know, saying that you're lame. That's something that you want, you know. And I mean, when you're collecting, it's it, it's all about that. It's nostalgia. It's about finding those things that, you know, you want, you know, what whatever the case may be, you know, and. You know, sealed, men in box, you know, never opened, or it is open, and, you know, you can find it cheaper that way as well. I mean, some of the figures that I, you know, collect, they're sealed is, you know, $200, but open, it's $20. That seal matters, you know, stuff like that. So there's all those things that you always always got to look at, but I definitely budget. You got to look at your budget and figure out, you know, I have 50 bucks this paycheck. You know, that's it. Beyond that you know, I'm not gonna be able to pay my electric bill. So is that figure worth your electric bill? You know, stuff like that, you know, and I, we were talking about last night, you see these guys all over the place that just buy outside their means. And then when push comes to shove, you know, your car breaks down or your electric bill, then you got to sell that figure that you just waited yeah. to get because you got, you got to take yeah, care of life. Yes. Yeah. You know, now another thing that that's been, that I'm actually liking lately. I mean, as everyone noticed, we've got such a uh, uh, big rush of people joining the guild. Yeah, um, so, which is you know, good. You want to do a shameless plug real quick people. and drop, drop everyone to the website and Instagram and apply in. And to say I, a lot of women who collect, who are, who are joining the guild, you know? And I think, and I think, you know, there's a lot of women collectors out there. They, I believe, yeah. I, I think we've had this conversation before last week, yeah. you know, they, they're primarily, this is a, a male dominant type of thing, but yeah. there's a lot of women collectors out there, a lot. Yeah. They've got incredible collections, actually make a lot of men cry. So yeah. I, I am to say that, you know? Yeah. But, you know, what's your take on that, Ruby? It's different, right? Like with social media, you get, obviously, you get inspired by other people's pages. And, you know, the guys are helpful, too. Some guys are not so much. But, you know, and then you just make friends, girlfriends, guy friends. Everybody's a community, which is great. And and that's it. And that's I think that's the best. That's why girls are joining, because they see everybody's welcoming them. And, you know. Mm-hmm. That's good, you know. Yeah. But uh, you know, and I think it's great. You know what I mean? I mean, and the thing is, we're getting a lot of more people, you know, worldwide. Yeah. As well, which is yeah. which is all, you know. Yeah. Um, we had Germany. One from Germany today, wasn't it? We had uh, actually got quite a few Liz. from Germany. Yeah, there is. Yeah, she is. she is. She is. She's from yeah. Germany. Yeah. And I think that's the most beautiful thing about what we do with the collecting and these characters is they're universal. It doesn't matter whether you're American or Canadian or Chinese. They they all translate and hit us the same way. So it doesn't matter what your gender is, what your age is. We can all connect with these, you know, right. awesome characters and figures. <laughs> but uh. Like, like I'm looking behind uh, Ian there. I'm looking at his collection, and I see the big mix that you have there, which is awesome. You know, 
So oh, it's, it's it's Thor. There you go, hey, Spider Man. Hey, props on that Thor. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> It, you know the the boy over here hooked it up, <laughs> but and I I'll have a room tour here soon to show all that stuff. Of course, up I got all the lighting set back up from my last one. Uh, one of the, I guess one of the first ones that we did. I didn't have any lighting throughout the room, so got lighting up. So room tours come. I just gotta get a good camera to do it, and not on my phone this time. I wanted to actually show everything this time. Yeah. And, and my DC's in the corner. So DC should never be in the corner. Yeah, but, baby should never be in the corner. Baby, baby in the corner. <laughs> you, you, once you see it, you'll see why it's in the corner. I just gotta get these big honking uh, comic shelves out of the way. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, all there's three of these guys that yeah, you know, they're four feet high with four drawers. All of these are full of comics, oh. so <laughs> that's not a, there's, there's not a good place to put those. <laughs> Yeah, and then LT, he's just swamped Man, I, 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 I've run out of room. I honestly have no more room. I, I need Let's to start. Turn into my room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you see right behind me. I've got a bunch of, you know, that are just stacked on each other. I, I've got to put away, uh, you know, either make more shelves or... Or, I guess, make my bedroom into a collector's room and just sleep on the floor. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's not a bad idea, dude. Sleep on the couch with the cat. Priorities. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I can't stop. I'm I'm clinically addicted to this. And, you know, and the good thing about this collection is that I know its value. I know what it's worth. And, and on top of that, my daughter knows she will inherit all of this when I'm gone. Because there's no way in hell I'm selling any of this. I'm well, going to keep collecting. Until I die. <laughs> so my daughter knows it's all hers, you know. Uh, and uh, like I said, I collect because I love it. I don't collect to to uh, sell or make money off it. You know, I will not... Uh, I will not become a scalper, in other words. Yeah. That's I mean, good. and that's the big thing is, you know, selling versus scalping. You know, you get something that, like, all right, perfect was that that uh, Christmas Batman. You know, it just didn't fit with my stuff. You know, I got it because I didn't want a scalper to get it. And I saw all those other Chrome Batmans. But, I mean, I think it was retail and shipping. You yeah. know, it wasn't – I'm I'm not looking to make – I don't look to do that unless – you're just a complete, you know what, and then I'm gonna rip you off. <laughs> but oh yeah, I helping people out is one thing. Grabbing two of something or whatever. Yeah, like um, I, like right now I have uh, uh, those Chris Ominga statues that I was trying to sell for a while, uh, just because I wanted to get something totally different. The the value on those things. I think I, if I remember right, was was what thirty nine ninety nine each originally. But yeah, originally thirty nine ninety nine each, and they, for some reason they skyrocketed in price. So I think the cheapest one right now is probably hundred thirty, hundred twenty for the it. different variants of it, and the Joker Batman. Uh, I believe that one's probably close to the three hundred range. Because it, it was a GameStop exclusive, and you can't find them. So I've had a lot of people ask me for them. But, uh, you know, for a $40 statue, now it's up to like 300 You know, but that's what they're willing to pay. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. Some things I get would be a scalper price. But then at other times, price of rarity is what brings it up as well. You know, how rare an item is. And like, uh, we were just having in the group chat, uh, Mexican reviews, and they were talking about the Willy Wonka pop. You know? Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, they only made 10 of those. And I believe, don't quote me, I could be wrong, I think six of them went to employees, and the other four went to their, uh, the members that are the people are in the area, or in the, they had a party or something, and they gave the other four away to guests that were there. And I think they sold the last one for like 16000 
Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It only sold, sold once online. Yeah. So whoever brought one sold it for 16000 for a pop. You know? That's crazy. But, that that and man then, had a, top, a, a hot topic pop like that that was only given to employees or the higher yeah. the higher ups. Uh, yeah, that's you're looking at like a five thousand, six thousand dollar pop. Exactly. You know, and they did the same rate. thing for Wonder Woman for just uh, Hot Topic employees, yeah. and there was only like twenty five of them. It was just a yeah. gold Wonder Woman from the Justice League movie. See, r- rarity is a big thing. You know, oh, yeah. when you're when you've got something that's rare, it costs a lot of money. Then, then that's a little different than than scalping. I think a lot of people should know that. You know. Scalping is, you know, they got a hundred of the same pops in the store, but you want to go around selling it, you know, quadruple of what it's really worth, you know, because you just can't find it in your area. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's the guys that go to the targets and buy all the figures and then go yeah. into the in the parking lot and then sell it for triple what it's worth because they got them all and you didn't even get a chance to get it. Exactly. Scum. If you're watching it, you're scum. Rebel scum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. What do you think, Jake? You're staying quiet there. We got to have you talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I think what's nice about the, you know, for me on the big, you know, statues in general, I mean, for me, when I've s- sold any of my stuff is when I honed in and just decided to collect my DC, um, sold my Marvel pieces. One is right behind Ian right now. Um, but I think that's part of the beauty, too, is, you know, I've sold. <laughs> I've yeah. sold pieces to actually two of us in this group, and um, it's cool to sell to your friends and like help them with yeah. their collection. Or, um, you know, I would much rather sell something a little cheaper to one of them than you know make more money off of some Joe Schmo I don't even know. But to what that they're rhymes. saying, yeah, I know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I think you know, especially with the scalping thing, there's a difference between. You know, some of these pieces are more investments, you know, and it, it, some people can buy a statue for their p- collection. But there are certain pieces that you can have as an investment and make a lot of money off if you just hold on to it or, or down the road. Um, but I think, you know, as long as you're being true to your collection and, um, you know, when you if you if you decide to sell a piece for whatever reason, you're just staying honest and and being fair to other people, you know, I, I kind of look at it as, you know, how would I want, you know, piece sold to me, you know, how, you know, because these are very important characters. They're very rare pieces. Some of the cases, even with Sideshow, you know, they only make 500 to 1500 of these things. And once they're done, they're done. So um, it's just knowing the worth and being fair to people. But yeah, um, that's the kind of nice thing about Sideshow in, in ordering direct. Um of like eBay is just making sure you know what you're getting. It's it's new, it's fresh, um, and um, yeah, just get get what you need, not not messing up every everybody else. True. You know what? That's all I have to say about that. that. Scalping, unfortunately, is not specifically to collectives we, yeah. we see it every day now here on the news with this whole COVID-19 virus people scalping you know toilet paper. toilet paper yeah. and, toilet paper is worth you know, more than gold you know <laughs> yeah you know, it's crazy yeah ice all sanitizers people scalp because it's 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 a sickness it's what they do to make money yeah it, uh, to reiterate, it's not just a collector thing. It's just it's yeah. a worldwide type uh, disease, if you will. <laughs> right. Yeah. Actually, I did have a thought actually for the bigger statues for anybody who's like getting into the bigger pieces with scalping because this kind of goes hand in hand. And this is not something a reason I haven't got into it. If you're looking to get these big pieces like quarter scale, third scale, stay away from the custom stuff. Unless you really, really have your homework done. Oh, yeah, or, definitely. Because I've know. seen so many people that, you know, they pay $1,000 and never got a piece, you know, and, and there's no way to get, there's no sideshow to get your money back, you know. Yeah. So and, until yeah. you really get experience or have a plug somewhere, don't stay away from custom at all costs. I mean, I, don't, I know there's some cool pieces out there, but get a sideshow, get a prime one, get an iron studios. You're so much safer doing that than getting a custom piece. 
Yeah, I had actually, you know, adding to that, I had a, a I know a collector, a good friend of mine. He actually paid about twenty six hundred for a custom piece, and this thing, I mean, it's bigger than any prime one of the, any of the prime stone, you know, show statues, prime yeah. one statues, and when he got it in. He actually had to actually modify the statue himself to keep it together. He, it looked good, but you could see the difference in the quality, yeah. the workmanship. You know, it looked good five, six feet away. Once you yeah. start getting closer to it, you can see all the defects. You know, yeah. it's supposed to be similar to Prime One, where the arms and everything they mag magnetically swap it. Yeah, yeah, stay in place. It's supposed to, it had it in there, but it wasn't staying in place. He actually had a crazy glue. The piece no. is in, Damn. so you know it's custom work is, is real risky. Yeah, so, what the what the problem is too. A lot of times they go up for pre order when they just show the render, like the three D sculpt of what it's going to look like. Half time is not even close to what it's going to look like once it's actually made. So just stay safe and go with you know a known company that has a you know a lot of pieces behind them, and you know what you're getting. Yep. Definitely. It could be it could be said the same for comics too. There's a lot of phonies out there too with comic books. Like even people that are selling like key pieces or keys, um, some of them are not in good quality, and it also depends on the seller too, right? Like I'm sure we've all run into that, like buying a book and then it wasn't what you wanted or it wasn't what you expected, right? So that, same I've thing. Ran I've run into that. Yeah, especially when they they self grade their own comics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sell them on eBay like that. Yeah, you know, and I know Pops. Pops has a a big fraud um, uh, bootleg. There's Pops some bootlegs. Yeah, you really, know what I mean? and, really. And you, oh, you gotta really be careful of the boxes. The boxes are, are a lot of the keys of if it's faked or not. I don't know the exact way of figuring it out, but I know if you uh, go on YouTube, anyone's watching, want to go on YouTube and learn about um, how to, you know, distinguish from a, a real pop or a fake pop. If you buy a line, you check it out because uh, it, it happens. It happens. Wow. I mean, you don't want to pay two, three hundred for a Batman pop, and then all of a sudden you find out it's a fake. I, you know? I think I have a uh, a fake Hello Kitty one in the house somewhere, and I was gonna show it. It's the bottom. <laughs> The bottom has a something on it. it. It's my wife's pop, not mine. It doesn't fit in my dark oh, collection. Yeah, her, right? but, <laughs> Nothing wrong with Hello Kitty. Yeah, yeah we I all. Mean, that, I wish I would have known. I would have grabbed it and showed because it, it is the the bottom. There's, I don't want to say it's a serial number, but it's a a number sequence um, of right. how it's manufactured. Um, but I'll I'll get it and you can post it on, on the main page to show a comparison. That's a good, that's a really good point because people are printing boxes. They're very easily printed. Yeah. yeah. You know, and these guys are also getting really good at making custom pop figures as well. And they're actually really good and sometimes better than what Funko's putting out. You know, so you do have to watch it. And if you're looking for stuff like that, there are people out there that are fantastic at making custom pops, you know, make a pop of, LT right now and it will look great, you know. But if you're looking for authentic, oh, you need to watch that. Well, they're making, <laughs> hey, they're, making top, they're making the ZZ top ones. I was thinking about me and you getting yeah. a, a nice uh, ZZ top ones for that us. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you find that pop, definitely so we can check it out. I'll look, for it. I'll look for it, definitely. And we, we still know it's yours. But, hey. um, I mean, <laughs> the um, pink does fit in very well with all that green back there. There, there you go. go. There you go. <laughs> I remember, actually, I remember going to, um, uh, years back, the Hello Kitty store in Manhattan. Yeah. They have, they have their own store. I don't know about now, but I know they have their own store. What's so. the company? Sanrio? Or Sanrio. Yeah. 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 I, I remember we my uh, my sister when we used to go to New York because I'm from Philly so that was a short trip for us but there was always a stop to go to up there it's such a cool store for that not for me yeah <laughs> <That's> <laughs> cool. uh, I mean, he's gonna be the bearded Hello Kitty comic guy <laughs> yeah that's it. the bearded kitty, I like that. <laughs> bearded kitty. <laughs> oh no 
<laughs> Although there are some Hello Kitty uh, kiss pops that are pretty cool looking. Have you ever seen those? Yeah. Oh, Hello Kitty dressed as wow, kiss. That's, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> LT with the save. Yeah, thanks. Well, thanks, like I said, I, have, I, like I had a, I had a, I have a younger sister, and I remember growing up with, you know, one side of the room was He Man, the other side was Hello Kitty, Sanrio. So, oh, good time. <laughs> so, if you could collect one thing, if you could purchase one thing right now, what would it be? Any of you? Uh, I I mentioned it last night on my, on the podcast. I it, I'm looking for the uh, brightest day uh, white lantern Batman, all limited to a thousand pieces in the world. It's a 2011, I think, exclusive, and uh, that's what I would buy right off the bat, like right now, if I had if it was in front of me. There you go. Who's next? Uh, for me, uh, it would definitely be, this is something that's not even out yet, but they're working on it. So XM Studios or Iron Studios, I believe, is doing a prototype of a customized full statue bat cave. It's six feet tall by four feet wide, and you can customize it with a bat plane, bat boat, bat computer, and you can just, like customize it with the T-Rex and Penny and all that, however you want it. And uh, it's going to be so expensive. It's probably the biggest statue, probably twice the size of the biggest statue I've ever seen. And it is so awesome. So uh, I would definitely go with the uh, uh, <laughs> the kid pushing. Uh, there you go. Uh, no, but that, that would be my dream piece for sure. Okay. Who's next? Me? Go ahead. Hey, you. I want a grappling hook gun. So if anybody's out there that makes <laughs> them, that's what I want. <laughs> You know, I saw a, a replica on Etsy today. I don't want a replica. I want the real she thing. She wants I to mean. grapple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dangerous. That's dangerous. <laughs> That's what I so, want, though. Yeah, there, there was the really cool replica from the Batman 89 shown at the uh, New York Toy Show last month, two months ago. They were doing some really good replicas, and they had the Batman 89 grappling hook. It looks like real. Wow. Yeah, so. no, I really want a grapple hook. Like, I really want to shoot it and swing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're fitting <laughs> right in. <laughs> what about you, Ian? Uh, I'll probably have to go with uh, Hulk 181 with the sideshow piece to go with it. To oh, the Marquette? Them, uh, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's uh, cool. I definitely want that as a combo. I, I'll i have a 181 one day. It's it's on my list. But I definitely want that. Well, me, if I could do it right now, it would be the six-foot Batman Arkham NECA statue. Nice. That's a nice one. Dude, if I could do that, that's what I'd buy right now. The only, I mean, I'm kind of afraid I'm going to come down to my living room and going to stand there and I'm going to have to like hit it with a bat, not thinking, you know, who it is. You know? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just going to scare the hell out of me, but, you know, oh I would God. love to get that. You know? So I, I have two comic stores that I go to that both of them have six foot Batmans sitting in various places in their stores and they scare the crap out of me every time I turn the corner and it's just standing there. And is I it just the Arkham it's, one? Uh, no, the one is just a regular uh, normal Batman. Uh, it's just actually they they got them from uh, a company in China because one yeah. store has a Hulk, one store has Batman, one store has a Supergirl, but the Batman was the one close to my work that I go to, and it literally just scares the crap. I I know it's there every time. I know it's there, but it's just like a shadow lurking. Wow. <laughs> and, and, I could tell you that that will happen. You will smash with the back because that's what I feel like doing every time. Just because it scares me. <laughs> that's cool. But I told them if they would get rid of their Hulk one because it's not the Hulk that they wanted. So that would be a great lawn ornament for me to have. It's about an eight foot Hulk. That's awesome. Uh, Probably won't fit in the room, but it will <laughs> fit nicely in my front lawn. Through the door. Oh, <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find something here. If I can find it, I probably can't find it. Ah, here it is. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. Uh, I go to Florida a lot, probably two, okay. three times a year, and I have to visit Coliseum of Comics. They own, it's a whole chain of comic book stores. All right. I think they own eight or 10 of them. I, I don't know the count, but the one I usually go to is the one in, uh, I believe it's Kissimmee. And as soon as you walk in, right, this is what you see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it up here. I mean, that is the front door. Oh, wow. That is oh, awesome. Right that home. is awesome. <laughs> right. That's cool. Okay? You know, that is legit. these things are ginormous, you know. That's what and, I'm talking about. I think, you know, I, I, I don't know if that's the hope you're talking about, but um, the store is unbelievable. They got everything in there. You know, so you know, I even have you know one of the little discount cards. So when I go down, I gotta buy something. You know, they punch my card. Sometimes you get discounts, and I come back. But um, you know, it, it's just cool to go to different places and see different things. That's you, true. You never know find. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, if any of you guys are in Vegas, they go to Torpedo, and you'll get to see the Vault. They have. Um, you know, their wall of CGC, and they always have stock of, like, Hot Toys and Sideshow. Um, it's definitely probably the coolest store that is in the States. I mean, I know that they, that, that one in Colorado is huge, but value-wise, if you're, you know, a high-end collector, that's a destination. Right. Ah, uh, there. I was, try I was trying to find my Hulk picture. I don't know if y'all can see it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Wow. Yeah. It's about oh, eight foot, I believe, cute. also. Wow. That's no, awesome. it was the uh, Comic Collector Guild t shirt. Thank no, you very much. Not. Very this, nice. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think uh, what other comics. See, I, I knew I had another picture or something. Can't find I had a Silver Surfer picture I wanted to show, but I can't find it nowhere. It's a yeah. huge, huge Silver Surfer. That's they did awesome. a good job on that. But, um, no, can't find it. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything else on the note? So far, this has been an awesome first, uh, first podcast. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this weekly session. Yeah. <laughs> It's my first time ever doing this, so if I'm weird, I'll get used to it eventually. <laughs> nah, we're going to cover ever. everything, so well, we're going to have fine. different topics, different categories. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. If, every week's going to be different, guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And next week, I think uh, I, I got a topic. I'll talk about it later. Oh, but, secret, uh, secret. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about it later, not on live air where people are seeing it, but um, uh, make it a little more controversial, you know, Ooh. let's get a little more spice into it. Let's do it. I have, a feeling, I have a feeling one female member is going to fight about that, you know, because <laughs> she's definitely strong on her Batman, so there's your hint. So I think we're going to have that type of conversation <laughs> next week. Sweet. Okay, let's do, let's do it. Yeah. Challenge on. <laughs> Challenge. That's what it is. So I think we might be able to do something like that. Sure. But you know, definitely, we're going to come up with a lot of different things, talk about different topics. Uh, if anybody has a topic that they want us to talk about or let us know, just, yep. you know, send a DM to any of us on the screen. You know, let us know what's going on. Or you can send a direct message to the guild. And, uh, you know, somebody will get back to you. Um, but yeah, comment comment on the video. Let us know, you know, what what you want to see more of. You know, the discussions and all that stuff. You know, we definitely, if you've made it this far in the video, then we kept your interest somehow. So let us know what you want to see more of. It was our pretty faces. <laughs> <That'll> do it. <laughs> I think the rest of us need beards. So much beard. Yeah. So much 
<laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like grabbing my clippers and seeing what I could do. Yeah. You know? Yeah, don't you know, do make, that. Make a, you know, Not a, now. A sculpture. I mean, <laughs> Not now, though. <laughs> <laughs> do it on. You know what? If I get you that, what, the White Lantern Batman? Jeez. <laughs> Any way I want, not off, but any way I want. Uh, that that figure probably it has to be in pretty damn good condition as far as unopened, no cracks, no scratches. Wow, there's a lot of details of that one. I, okay, <laughs> <All right. laughs> it was worth a try though. <laughs> uh, or you know we could get Jake to grow a beard. You guys no! have been waiting a while. No. You guys have been waiting a while. No. The woman has spoken. No. Don't do it. <laughs> I realize I look 12. When I get a little peach fuzz, it's just it's gonna take me weeks, so you might be waiting a while. You look 12, I look 12, and I'm almost 40, so there's that. <laughs> Aging like fine wine. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. So funny. Oh. <laughs> we're, the, we're the old elephants in the room, LT. That's what it oh, sounds like. Elephants? No way. Old is the no, new new. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, um, hey, uh, I'm trying to think. Well, there was something else I had to say, and I can't remember because oh, we talked about a lot of stuff. <laughs> Next week, then I'll remember it by then. Hopefully, hopefully. So, Ian, why don't you close it up? All right, so yeah, that's gonna be it for this week. Uh, this is first episode. Um, you want to know more? Go visit the website, comiccollectorsgirl.com. Check out the Instagram, check out all these fine people's Instagram, and we'll see you next week. Keep hunting. <laughs>